In this session we're going to talk about the job window and the task window. You can either edit an existing job by clicking the double clicking on the job row here or you can uh, click on the add job button here. When you've clicked you're presented with this job window which has a number of tabs. In the first main settings tab you can control the name and description of the job. You can set a group that the uh, job should belong to within the grid of the main main view window. You can set the job to run once and then be deactivated. You can set it to run miss job once and start and that means that if you have set up a schedule and uh, for some reason the server was down and you start up the server again, if the job was supposed to run uh, during that time it will run if you have checked the checkbox. You can remove the job after running that means that it will only run once and then will delete the job. You can run the job randomly uh, using a value here. You can select to not start the job if it's already running and there's an option here as well to put jo the job in queue so if you start it one time, if it's already running, it will be put in queue and run after when the job has been completed. You can select to run tasks in order and that is the default option to, to run uh, from task 1 to the last task. Or you can uncheck this to run all the tasks in parallel. But then you lose a lot of the functionality that exists in Visicron for controlling the actual flow within the job. You can choose to have it activated uh, ready for scheduling when uh, you click on the OK button. You also have uh, something called job variables. I mentioned in some uh, tutorials before that we have a global object called variables. Then we also have user variables, which uh, are which variables that you can create your, uh, yourself, and those are global as well. And then we have job var variables, and those are uh, specific to this job, so you can create the variable here, uh, and set the value here. And you can access the variable by using this uh, variable string that you see here. So for example you can refer to this variable from another job. You can pass the information forward. And there are also other tasks for starting another job and then you can pass uh, the in, in value to this. Uh, you can set this value in runtime as well. We have the permissions button here and by default, you have uh, users that connect, and each user are con uh, have are in one or more groups. And you can override the groups here to say, for example, that the group viewers should be able to edit this one. So if it's a positive change, it will be green, and if we remove a permission add from the administrators group, it will be red here. In the triggers tab you control the triggers and triggers are ways to start a job. And a, a job can contain one or more triggers. And we have different um, kind of trigger types. We have the time trigger type uh, which could be for example uh, to start a job at a specific time or a specific interval. So if I open the time trigger settings here, I'm able to choose, for example, specific days of the month. I can select I only want it to run the last Monday every month. Or uh, I can say specific days of the week and set the days I want it to run here. And uh, the time that it will be started uh, is set here at the start time and it will use the time in every interval. And then we have the custom time trigger, which enables you to set uh, uh, 
which uh, year, month, day, hour, minute and second you want it to run. So for example this is set to run every year, every month, every day, every hour, every minute. I can choose to set it to run every second here as well. So I can control in detail when this job should start. And then we have the event triggers and event triggers are uh, events that occur within the system operating system or within Visual Chrome that you can or another location for example an FTP server as uh, so we have different kind of uh, event triggers here first we have the our internal Visual Chrome event trigger and this event trigger uh, lets you for example uh, start a job based on completion of another job so you can chain jobs this way and uh, you can chain job on the local server or on the remote server so for example if I have created a Visual connection in the uh, global objects connection I will be able to select the connection here and uh, reload the jobs here and select the job I want to wait for completion and then press OK and I will use this trigger here. Then we have the file trigger and the file trigger can watch changes on local or remote files and by remote I'm referring to on, on network shares in this case. So I can specify the folder path and the file mask that I want to use and um, what kind of changes I want to uh, be notified of and uh, if it's a non-Windows machine I can use polling alternative it is not reacting as fast but is compatible with the uh, SAML shares so optionally I can include to watch uh, subfolders I can wait for the file has been released and this is especially interesting if I want to do something with a file when uh, uh, it has been created for example We have the remote file trigger and currently the remote file trigger uh, lets you specify a connection and in this case we have uh, we are supporting uh, FTP and SFTP connection and that means that you set up uh, FTP connection for example remote server all the connections you set up and then you specify a folder you want to monitor and you can choose to monitor, monitor for new files, modified files or deleted files and whenever that file has been created it will trigger the job so you can decide to do something, maybe use a download task to, to download the file or, or notify uh, your team members in any other way you have the SQL trigger which can monitor database it will um, let you define an existing database the connection that you have created and once you have created that uh, you will be able to set a SQL text query or use a store procedure that returns a value you can form the query any way you like but it should return a value for example you can say well if um, it contains uh, more than uh, 20 rows so you can create a query that returns this value and then you can in the condition tab here you select that if it's um, you select the database database type here and sorry the data type the data type and um, for example I'm using this integer data type to um, compare if it's larger than a specific value and if it is I can choose to fire the trigger and the job will be started We have the email trigger uh, and then lets you monitor a uh, remote uh, IMAP or POP3 folder and same as before you use the global objects and in this case th the mail, the email connection so I'm selecting an existing email connection here and I'm able to specify the folder I want to monitor here and uh, then I'm able to add some specific security settings to uh, that may be used for the encryption of the actual connection 
unable to set uh, different kind of checks for example if new emails are arriving uh, I want them to be from a specific email only if uh, if they should trigger or have a specific subject and then I decide what to do for example I need all these conditions to match uh, to fire the trigger and uh, if I want to leave the message on the server uh, or uh, delete it afterwards I can op option I choose to copy the, um, the new email to another folder I can save the email and the attachment if I want to then we have the process uh, event trigger which lets you um, uh, monitor a process locally or remotely within the network uh, and we can uh, we're able to monitor if a process has been completed or started so based on that you can decide to fire the trigger and start a job we have the service trigger uh, which uh, monitors uh, services so you can uh, set the uh, service name here select from existing services uh, you set it to uh, for changes to any status or changes to a specific status in order to fire and we have the registry trigger you select where in the registry you want to monitor uh, which uh, hive for example the local machine and the key path and uh, it will monitor for that kind of uh, change you have the event log where you can monitor for new events within the event log you select the log file if uh, it contains a specific message or etc you have the RSS trigger which lets you specify a uh, HTTP path for uh, RSS uh, and uh, then you can click on the fetch button here, here and it will give you which uh, feed conditions are available for this um, RSS feed for example some um, some parts may not exist uh, depending on different standards but uh, almost always you have the title and the description and you can choose to well if it contains a specific message uh, or something like that then fire the trigger you have the performance counter and performance counters are uh, values that are either inserted by applications, the operating system or hardware and for example that could be uh, the processor is constantly publishing data uh, about uh, the CPU usage so you could use the, the process if I find it here So I can um, I can set check a specific process or a process in general. Uh, if it uses more than 50% CPU for more than 10 seconds, then I want to fire the trigger. So that's one example how you can use this performance counter. We had the system start shutdown trigger, which uh, the startup and shutdown uh, are referring to when the computer has been started or when the computer is about to shut down. So you're able to run a specific job just when the computer has started or when the computer is about to shut down if you want to do something before. So these are the triggers that exist right now. You can set them in dependencies. So uh, it means that you can select one or more triggers that you want to uh, match uh, to trigger at the same time or interval if if they have if they do that then fire the trigger if not uh, you can then um, select to uh, uh, to not trigger at this time 
in the time exceptions you control uh, time exceptions are global object that you can that you set once and for example it could be US holidays so I if you have set US holidays uh, you can just uh, check the checkbox here and uh, it will exclude the execution during um, those days for example you have you if you have a schedule that is uh, to run a job every day and you have set up uh, a time exception including use holidays check this one here and then it will not run it that day conditions are also global objects that uh, are checked before uh, a specific uh, job or uh, task is being run for example if a file exists so if you have created a condition set you can select what happens uh, if the condition is, is met or not should I continue or should I just stop so if I select the condition here and it is met uh, it will continue with the job execution otherwise it will just skip the job execution you have the central part here which is the tasks and the tasks are listed in order you can add new tasks by clicking on the add button here once you've added it you can uh, uh, change the order here and you can put them in loop and uh, you can just double click to edit them in the timeout tab you control if the job should run for a specific time uh, if it should not have more than a specific time before it kills itself and all running uh, uh, tasks. In the flow tab you control what happens when the job uh, well if something should happen when the job starts or completes. So I can add existing what we call flows here by clicking on the add button and I have some options to um, to do something when the job has been started, uh, if the job fails, if it succeeds or if it completes. So for example if the job fails and uh, the exit code is uh, of value, um, maybe we want to do an uh, integral comparison, if the exit code is of value 1, I can go to the job flow control group here and control what happens. So I can for example set that it should retry it three times and wait one second between each time. So if it uh, then succeeds it will uh, not do anything because then it will not raise the own error again. I can uh, tell it to run another job. I can uh, tell it to run a notification. This could be an email notica notification for example telling me that uh, the, the job has failed and uh, do something about it and optionally I can always choose to deactivate the job so now we have talked about the uh, add job window I will now, now go through the add uh, task window and you can add a task by right clicking on the job and choose add task and in this case I can just click here and uh, then it will uh, add open uh, the, the window with the default task which is the process task or I can select the task here that I want to add so I click on this uh, button here I'm presented with this window so in this window we have the main settings you select the task name you're able to change the task type here you are able to set the encoding which is used for for example if you have a file write task the encoding uh, value is used for describing uh, how in what character format you want to save uh, the, the content that you write by default we're standing standard, we're storing standard output and standard error if you want to turn this off for some reason you can do this here we have the execution context and um, it is a complex part of this how we start the actual task and uh, 
most of the tasks only have the option to execute in the background and that means that the Windows service is starting the application sorry is starting the task in the background and uh, no user have has to be logged on but in the execute test that we're looking at right now uh, we are also presented with some other features so if you click on this change the execution context we are presented with this window and you have some options here so by default we are executing on the current server but if you have another Visicron server you can choose to execute that executable you have to have that executable on a local path on that remote server but you can choose to schedule execution on that remote server and if you have looked at this before uh, you have the remote execute task uh, it is very limited by Windows so this feature gives you all features of the execute task and uh, lets you do that on a remote server you also have the other task called job task control task and the, the difference between this and uh, uh, this setting and using that task is that if you have are using the job task control task then you have to have an existing job or task on the remote server in order to execute this setting gives you uh, the opportunity to just launch an XC without having any task on the other uh, other server you can choose to execute in the background and foreground and then this is only available for the execute task and the desktop macro task so uh, if you click uh, on the foreground execute you can uh, option that means that the actual execution part will be done by the Visicron tray client which is running in the foreground and that's the only way to access the desktop session I mean you should avoid using foreground execution unless you really really need to because foreground execution is more error prone and uh, it's a security risk because what is happening is that you tell Visicron to log on to the desktop and launch an executable. During this time anyone could interrupt the process and gain the same kind of access uh, that you have given Visicron to access this specific desktop session. But if you need to do that, if you some for some reason need to interact with the desktop, you should use foreground execution execution and you're able and you should use execute on any desktop session uh, because that is the most efficient and less error prone but you can select a specific session but then it's not sure that that session exists uh, at that moment when you are logging in uh, you can you're using a credential you you need you may need to unlock if the, the computer is not locked you need to unlock it and the the whole unlock process is uh, completed by Visicron is uh, accessing the credential provider in the operating system and uh, logs on similar the way you type in the username and password but in the background so you set the user that you want to log on as here uh, and you optionally you can select to lock the workstation right after you have logged on this increases the security and uh, you can choose to uh, when you are done lock the workstation log off the user or leave it as is so these are the execution settings for the task as mentioned before we have the conditions they are similar to the conditions at job level as said before you can have conditions on job or task level and these are global conditions they will be visible for both uh, jobs and tasks and uh, if you check a condition here it will be checked and processed before the task is being run so uh, in the settings of that condition set you can uh, select whether you want to continue after 
if the condition is matching or if you want to skip to the next task or exit or whatever. In the middle tab you have the specific tab for t the task and in this case we have the execute task. So you set all required settings for this task here. In the on error tab you control what causes an error uh, within this specific task. And uh, we have some uh, ways to, uh, depending on what task you choose, you can, uh, you are presented with uh, different kind of uh, errors that you control can control. For example, if you have the execute task, you can set it to raise errors on non shared exit code or ignore them. Or and you can also ignore errors like timeout errors. So if you select another task, for example, if, if you have the um, list files task, you can optionally raise an error if no file is found. We have something called exit code collection, and this was newly presented. And by default, we're using the Windows exit code collection. And these are exit code uh, presented by Microsoft uh, that are telling us that zero is success and uh, all other exit codes are some kind of failure with a description. But in Visucron, you can choose to create your own exit code collections, and that could be useful for specific uh, uh, executables that uh, are not following the default scheme that Windows users f that Windows uses for example if you're uh, using Robocopy uh, in, uh, when using Robocopy one is success and uh, the others are failure so uh, I can select this an existing uh, another existing ro uh, exit code collection here and if I want to create a new one uh, I I'm presented with this window and I can edit and add new items and decide whether it's success or not and get a description for the specific exit code. And that description will be transferred back in the result when I run the task. You can also have some basic conditions here for setting an error throwing an error within the task if the output contains a specific value or not. In the timeout tab you uh, control just like in the um, uh, job window what happens uh, if a timeout occurs. Should we use some kind of timeout? Uh, let's say you don't want this uh, job ru running for more than one minute. Uh, if it's running more than one minute it will kill the current task and uh, throw an error. In the flow tab uh, we have similar settings like in the flow tab of the uh, in the job window. And by default we have these two actions. If it, the task succeeds it will continue with the next task. If the task fails, it will stop the job. You can alter these. You can also create new ones. And like the job, you are presented with the same kind of events on start, on error, success, and complete. But if I choose uh, on error, I'm also able to look at the output. So if the output contains, for example, a specific uh, error string, then I want to do something. And I have some more options than in the job flow. I'm able to stop the job. I can continue with the next task in order if this happens. I can wait and retry. And if it's finally failing after three times here, I can run another task. I can just choose to go to another task directly within the current job and uh, decide to run if I want to run the task in order or not. I can stop this job and run another job. And I can run this uh, asynchronous, which means that uh, it will start the job and will it will just stop the current job. Or I can uh, 
select that I want to uh, this job to complete when the other job has completed. I'm able to uh, select that I want to run a notification, for example, send an email about the output of the failure, for example. I can op optionally choose to deactivate the task or deactivate the job. So now we have gone through the, um, uh, the basics of uh, adding a job or an adding a task. Uh, you can always click F1 or click on this button at any time to see the specific uh, uh, documentation for the task you're currently looking at. So if I'm clicking here, I will present with the documentation for the execute task. I hope you found this useful. If you have further questions, please look at the documentation, tutorials, or get back to us with any questions. Thank you.